Hello, we're back again today working with the X-Tool P2 engraver. It's the 55 watt CO2 laser engraver. Today we're going to go through the setup, the software, and the setup within the machine for engraving one of these powder coated tumblers. And here's one that's already done. You can see what a nice job this machine does on the engraving. This powder coat does really clean, really very detailed engraving on this. So we're going to go through setup. This is the RA2 Pro. We're going to set up the tumbler in this device. We're going to install it in the P2 engraver, and then we're going to go through all the software setup, the speed, the power, the passes, all the settings that are needed to do an engraving on this particular uh, tumbler. So this is the X-Tool RA2 Pro, and it's a pretty versatile rotary tool for any of the X-Tool laser engravers can be configured several ways. It can be configured with these rollers. Um, they can be moved in or a wide setting. And then this chuck is obviously removed, but with the rollers removed, you can add this chuck. It has another belt here to drive it. And then this chuck has several different types of connections. It has these jaws, couple of different sizes of jaws that can be attached in a couple of different areas to accommodate larger or smaller items. It also has some pins for holding small items from the inside, like a ring or something. You can screw these pins in here, three of them. And so you can clamp things in there inside or outside. It has this attachment that can connect on here and has a cup on the end of it for holding the end of a sphere or anything that's rounded and it rotates so it can sit in there and hold pressure against something and so it's a pretty versatile tool like i said it works with all of the x tool engravers for the p2 which is what we're working with today it uses this cable has the same plug for the stepper motor and then this four conductor plug plugs into the back within the, the working area of the P2. For the D1 or the D1 Pro, it uses the same plug in there, and then this plugs into the motherboard on the machine. So we're going to set this up to engrave this tumbler, and for this size opening, we're going to use these chucks, or these jaws on the inside of the opening, and set it in there about like that. and then tighten those. And then we're also gonna use this other little accessory that comes with the RA2, and it is just an end support. It has these two rolling wheels on it, and you can raise and lower it. So we'll set that in place inside the, the P2, put it underneath there, and just give it a little bit of support. And that way, when this thing rotates, it can stay supported on, on both ends. So inside the P2, you have to make a few changes to get ready for the rotary adapter. First thing to do is take out any of the slats that you have in place. And then this drawer, and they call it a base plate, I think. It slides out. And then so we can lower it to accommodate the height of the RA2, the rotary tool and whatever we're gonna put in it. And in the case of this tumbler, we're gonna put it in slot number two. So slot number two right there, same on this side. That'll make it a uniform height all the way across and will give us room for our rotary tool. Once that base plate is lowered, there's room to put the rotary tool in. This is that four conductor plug. It has a little notch on the bottom of it here, that goes to the bottom of this plug in the back of the machine. And there's a little retaining nut. There's really no reference marks in this base plate to show what parallel is to the machine. So I'm just using this little block of wood. I'm gonna make a couple of marks. And then we can use those reference marks to line up the RA2 and make sure that it's holding the tumbler parallel to the frame of the machine. This RA2 comes with a little level 
and we need this edge that we're going to engrave onto to be level with the machine. So we can achieve that by just propping up one end of it until it's level. And then we're gonna support the end of it with this support tool. So that's really about it as far as setting up the tumbler on the RA2 and getting it in the machine. Now we'll go through the software, go through all the settings there, and then we'll engrave it. So something we're gonna to need to account for when we set this up in the software is that this tumbler is tapered. So it's narrow at the bottom, it's wider at the top. So as we engrave, the rotary tool is gonna to turn the tumbler, less area is gonna pass under the laser pointer or under the laser tip at the B. Over here, the circumference is larger, so it, the same amount of rotation is going to pass more surface area through. So when we set this up in the software, we're going to make each of these letters slightly smaller in height, not in width. The width will be the same, the height will be slightly smaller, and I've figured out just through trial and error that this specific tumbler, this taper, requires about 0.8 of a millimeter reduction for each letter. So that's what we'll do when we uh, set that up in the software. So this is Xtool software. It's called Creative Space. This is version 1.4.11, and it was just released in the beginning of July. And the first thing we're gonna do is set up the graphic that we're going to engrave. So I have a tennis racket, SVG, that I downloaded. I think I bought it on Etsy, and here it is. To do the letters for the name, click on this text button over here, and right up here, it shows the text that you're going to be entering. Since we talked about having each letter be a little bit smaller, we're going to do the three letters separately. So we'll do a K. Move that out of the way. Do an I. and a M. And the font is called Sitka that I'm using. And the style is called Small Bold. So we'll change all three of these. So we're going to make the I a little smaller than the K and the M a little smaller than the I, like we talked about earlier. To start, we'll make them all the same height. Start with something easy at 20. And also what you can do here is select all three of those, all three of these letters, select the line, vertical align center, and it will center up these letters. And that's a good starting point. They're all the same height and they're all aligned. So. We're going to set all of them at 20 millimeters tall, and that'll be a good starting point. So that's 20 millimeters tall. The eye, we're going to unlock this little padlock here, and what that'll let us do is shorten the height without affecting the width. If you have that closed, if you adjust the height or the width, it will change the other dimension accordingly. So we'll open that. We'll drop this down to 19.2, make it a little bit smaller, and then we'll drop this one down, unlock it, drop it to 18.4. So we've reduced each of those by 0.8. Now we can grab them all again, align them again, And then once we have them where we want, we can hit control and then use the mouse wheel and zoom in. And then we can adjust the kerning and set these to where they look good to us.
I think that looks about good. And then once we have that done, do the alignment one more time to make sure that everything is lined up in the center. And then we can grab them all and combine them under combine unite. Now, instead of three separate graphics, we have one graphic with all three letters in it. Now we can take this group of letters that we made, turn it 90 degrees and then kind of move it into place and then size it to a size that we think looks good. By changing this, if, if we highlight this, the letters, Kim, we go over here, they're set to score, which is in Lightburn, it's called, it's called outline in creative space. They call it score. And then in Lightburn, they call fill where they everything's filled in, in creative space, they call that engrave. So if we set both of these to engrave, this is basically how it's going to look as it gets engraved onto the tumbler. So once we get this where we want it, we can then select both of these and combine these two as well. Now we have one image that contains the tennis racket and the name, and it can be managed all together. A neat feature that Creative Space recently added is this layers down here. And what you can do with this is, we'll go back to separate these two. You can take this, say you wanted one of these to be a score and one to be engraved. You can highlight that, move it to a different layer. And so now you have, you can manage these two layers individually. One could be a score, one could be an engrave. In our case, they're all going to be the same. They're going to be set to engrave, so we can manage them together as one graphic. And there it is. So that's what we're going to engrave onto the tumbler. I know from having done these before that the total height of the image that I like to use for this tennis racket one is 95 millimeters. So with this padlock shut, I can select the whole thing, set it to 95. And so that's now set to the correct size for our engraving onto this tumbler. One thing that's really neat about the P2 is that it has a couple of cameras in it. So it can actually take a picture of the work area and you can place your graphic based on that picture. So it's connected now. If we hit refresh up here in the right, it'll actually take a picture of the inside of the workspace. And then we can place our graphic the way we want it. What we need to do before we can do that is select laser cylindrical from the selection and that moves it into the space that the rotary tool uses. So a couple of things about using this, this cylindrical setting. This green line represents the left edge of any graphic. This graphic needs to be turned now, a 180. Since, since the top of the tumbler is here. So this green line represents the left edge of the engraving, where it's going to start engraving and it's going to engrave as it rotates. So what has to happen is this green line needs to be set at the very highest point of that tumbler. And this picture gets a little skewed and it's a little dark. So there's a couple of ways to find out where to set this as far as the highest point. An easy way, and what I usually do, is I just take a pencil mark and draw a little line on the actual tumbler at its highest point. Then I'll come back, refresh this, and set that green line to the pencil line. Another way is you could take a little splinter of wood or any kind of little marker and go just go set it onto the tumbler in the P2 and then come back, refresh the image. So I'll go mark that with a pencil now. Okay, so now the pencil mark is there. We can come back to Creative Space, hit Refresh, and there the pencil mark shows up. Move this line right onto there. This graphic, which we've already set to the correct size, we can put it in place now. And so we just need to decide 
where it goes in this area and then move it right up to that green line. If you hit control, you can zoom in and then move it right up to that line. In creative space, if you click off of the image and onto the background, what you're engraving on, over on the right, this is where you can define your material and you can tell it whether you're using the rollers or whether you're using the chuck, the diameter. I measured this tumbler about in the middle and it came up with 88 millimeters for a diameter. Once you enter that, it calculates the perimeter or the circumference and automatically enters it. The distance I've calculated from doing this before and some trial and error at 14 millimeters. And so that's the settings for the background. Then when you click on the actual graphic, this is where you define the engraving that you're going to do. So you can put output or ignore. And what this is used for is if you're using more than one layer, say you wanted to engrave layers one and two, but not layer three, you could select layer three and select ignore, and it would just do the first two. In our case, we have one layer. So we're selecting output selecting engrave. The power for this is going to be 20%. The speed is going to be 80 millimeters per second. One pass, lines per centimeter at 300 and bi-directional. So that is the settings for the actual engraving. If you click on here, these are the settings for the material. So that's the whole setup for this engraving. We can go back one last time and confirm everything. Check the numbers, click the graphic, make sure our power, speed are correct. So when you're sure everything's correct, you hit start. It opens up this preview window, shows you a quick preview, and then you hit start again up in the right corner. And when you do that, the machine will beep and the start button on the top of the machine will turn blue. You just manually press that and that starts the job. So what I have found for cleaning off this charred powder coat is just regular rubbing alcohol and I use these magic erasers and they clean it up pretty nice. First I start with just some uh, paper towel to get the bulk of it off. Scrub it pretty good with this. And you can see how nicely it removes that powder coating right down to the metal, nice and shiny. Very clear, crisp lines in this tennis racket. You can also look this way and see that the letters are all the same height, even though in the software we had shrunk the, the I and the M a little bit, but because of the larger radius, they come out even. So that's it, all of the hardware and software settings and everything to engrave this tumbler. I'll put a link in the description for this specific tumbler that I used. And there's also an affiliate link to the Xtool website for the P2 and any of their other equipment. If you do use that affiliate link, it will help support this channel, which I appreciate very much. As always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.